Just like the last section, I want to get straight to the point with this video and summarize all the new information that you'll find on the LOPS Tutorial 3. If you're interested in following along step by step, this is already laid out for you, so feel free to do that. Um, however, let me just tell you about all the new stuff and we can go from there. As you can imagine, there are multiple ways of building up this scene graph tree from scratch. One way is that if you bring in an asset like this, like the barrel, you reference this in. Again, we set this primitive path like you've seen me do. That names it barrel over here, which includes the mesh and the materials. And then you basically break out all the different variants like this. So I use this set variant node and you just pick barrel with no lid or whatever, right? You do that for all the variants. You set a null for what variant that is and then we can use something called a graft node. A graft is basically a way of taking something on this input and taking all the stuff that's in the input stage and making it a child. So as an example, I have this node here called X form, right? And if I plug that in, if you look over here at the scene graft tree, check this out. Now all those barrels are children of create X form. Now, this X form is a little bit confusing because normally you think X form is transform, or usually when you see X form, that's shorthand for transform. However, we do have a transform <laughs> and we have X form. Two different things. X form is talking about the X form layer over here in this scene graph tree or I shouldn't say layer, it's the X form, I should say thing here in the scene graph tree. Transform, this guy is talking about actually moving around things in your scene. Usually when you use a transform like this, you are trying to transform something procedurally. And just as a side note, edits, I know this is all kind of confusing, edit, is usually when you want to just move something with your handles in the scene. So, just as a side note, I want to uh, reiterate that half the battle is just trying to get past the names of things, but um, that is essentially what the graft is doing. Now check this out, on the graft node, we could say primitive kind, and right now we have additional X forms that are happening, right? If I'm looking at this prim type, but I can change that. I could say, maybe these are all supposed to be groups. And look at that. Now the kind is a group. You'll notice that even the icon over here has changed to indicate a group of things. So again, these are just all different ways that you can build up this scene graph path. Here's how I would actually bring in everything. I wouldn't do it like this if it was me. What I would do is I would just create a stage manager and I would just browse for whatever it is I'm looking for and drag it in. Now, there is a problem with this that I will tell you here shortly. Well, it's really not a problem, but it's something to watch out for. So, let's say that I bring in, oh, let's do something besides the barrel. Let's say that I bring in a bookshelf, bookshelf asset, like so. Okay, I have a bookshelf. What I did, is essentially the same thing as what this reference node is doing. But there is one key difference, and that is with the stage manager, if you plug anything into this top input, it's going to flatten everything above it. Now, what does that mean? It means that if I did this, now all these barrels can't be updated by other departments. If, let's say, for whatever reason, the director wanted to say, all right, let's make these barrels pink. I don't know why, but let's say that's, that's what's happening. The barrel, once it gets updated by the texturing department, will not get updated by your scene because it has been flattened up here. And the reason why the stage manager flattens it is just due to the the internal mechanisms, I suppose, the way that the stage manager works in general. So it's something to watch out for. 
What that means in practice is never plug anything into this top input unless, unless, actually, no, I, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say <laughs> never do that. <laughs> unless you're okay with these never being updated again. So, yeah, just so you know, that is something to really watch out for when you're in a pipeline, because if that happens, then the texturing department would be like, hey, why aren't the barrels pink in your effects scene? Or, you know, and if your effects scene goes to lighting and it goes to rendering, then you get the idea. It just, um, it can kind of create a little bit of a mess. So, yeah, like I said, just watch out for that. If you'd like to use multiple stages, then that's where this whole graph node comes in handy, because we can do this. Let's say that this is the bookshelf right here. We can do this over here with something else, the books, let's say, and uh, let's just find book asset, bring that in. And now, as you can see, we have a hierarchy over here of things that we've brought in and we're not flattening anything because nothing's plugged into these top inputs. So we're good to go. In the next video, let's take a look at how to take advantage a physics-based transformation whenever you are laying things out.